production. We are so happy to have you with us here this morning. We are going to go ahead and enter into the worship. So if you will stand with us and sing. Yes, ma'am. Today's Advent reading comes from Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. For the grace of God appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God, and Savior Jesus Christ, 
who gave himself to us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are very are his very own eager to do what is good. Please join me in responsive reading, putting your worship guide or follow along on the screens. Hope is the eternal flame that flickers in the soul of humankind, planted there by our Heavenly Father. Hope is to look to the future, to the promise of a new day and a new beginning. In Christ, all things come in. Hope is the quiet security of what is to come. We know who holds the future. Hope is the reflection of Christ in our lives, a positive witness to the world. May the hope of glory abound in each of you this entire Advent season. And also with you. Beloved in Christ, as we gather together on this first Sunday of Advent, let us hear once again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in the manger. During this service, we will read and reflect upon the Holy Scriptures, which tell the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought by to us by this holy child. But first, let us join together in prayer. Will you pray with me? Let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who, who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love Him not, or who by sin have grieved His heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all the saints who have gone before us, and rejoice even now upon another shore, and in a greater light that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself had taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lift up your eyes and see the riches of the all-sufficient King seated on his throne in glory scepter that stretches the expanse of unmeasured space. Hear him who holds all things together declare all things are mine without exception. See the curiosity of the cosmos as Christ condescends to his most cherished creatures. See the astonishment of angels as the Almighty advances towards earth. See the humility of the pre-existent king born of a virgin birth. man, the divine becomes despised, and the Christ is crucified. The author of all creation cursed upon the tree that he himself spoke into being, and the Lord of life was laid in the tomb. But the grave could not contain him, and so the Son of Man was raised to life. But why? To draw near, to pierce our greatest fear shed satisfying blood on our behalf, to give back the life we were meant to have, to enjoy, to hear, to adore, to taste, and to look with peace upon our Savior's face, and to enjoy. 
embrace him with an undying faith to interpose all his worthiness into us and serve the most unworthy and undeserving. He is our God and we are mere men made by him. We are not like him, but he loves us and moves among us. The great uncreated and the created no longer separate. He is Emmanuel. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? I heard the sound of, your vo of you in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The woman whom you gave to me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. What is this you have done? The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock, and all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and thus shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. 